I think we're getting better. Here we go, tip off senior girls game and Pickett wins the tip off for the Lady Jacks. And now there's a scramble for it inside and Lady Village is going to get possession. They're pushing it down court, takes a shot, it's tipped away. Second shot up, can't find the rim. And now Morgan Gaithen gets it over to number 12, Yakima Hegler. Inside shot taken, it's up and good. Number 13, Shakendra Robertson. Good play in the paint. She did a good job of catching the ball and turning and shooting. Now Lake Village on the offensive attack, and they turn it over. We got a foul called on the Lady Beavers. And I think Warren's going to have a size advantage here as far as height is concerned overall. Hopefully that will work to our advantage. Inside, trying to find Hegler, and the ball goes out of bounds, Lake Village. The shot was there. She, she had her open and just couldn't connect with the pass and the catch. They get her to cross court, off of a foot. And again, there's a scramble. Lake Village is going to retain. Three-point shot up. Just a bit long, it rims out. Gaithen now gets it over to Charles. Shot up, no good, but Pickett's got it. She takes a shot up, and she's going to the line to shoot two. And Rob, I don't want to sound like a broken record like I probably did last time we uh, had a game on live, but uh, this young lady is, is quite talented and just a ninth grader. She's going to get better and better. Very aggressive. Good ball skills, can uh, dribble and shoot. She rebounds, and of course has good height. Score three to nothing. One more free throw coming up for Pickett. It's up and it's no good, so the score remains three to nothing. And now Lakeside bringing it down the court, just beyond the three-point line. Shot up. It's no good. Pickett's got the rebound. Gets it down. Robertson's there. Apologize for that camera situation. Pickett takes a shot, and it's up and good. 5 nothing. Beautiful form on her shot. Went right in. Warren sets up in a 2-3 zone. Ball tipped away, but Lake Village keeps it in bounds. Gaithen inside. Robertson shot up. She's going to the line. She'll shoot two. So a good start here for the Warren Lady Jacks as they have a 5 0 lead over Lakeside with 5.39 to go in the first. Shot falls. It's 6 0. She got that good roll, bounced it way up in the air, and went right back in. Her second's no good. Lakeside gets the rebound. And we got a foul called, and it's going to be on the charge. Well, that was kind of interesting. Looked like both two officials about the same time made the call, and one of them pointed to the other one and said, you call it. Which way is it? <laughs> he called it charge. So. I think we may have caught a break there. I thought she kind of uh, stepped into it. I'm not sure it was happening very rapidly, as it often does. Robertson's shot is up. No good. Pick it after this one. Can't quite keep it in bounds, and it's going to be lakeside ball. Nice job by Morgan Gaithen on the defensive end. Putting a little bit of pressure on Lakeside. Shot up, no good. Pickett's got the rebound. She gets it out. 
to Charles. Kiera Charles. Inside now to Robertson. Shot up. No good. Back to Pickett. Jumper. No good. And we're seeing the start of a bad thing here. This is kind of what happened last Friday night against Monticello. We just couldn't got into a slump where we couldn't hit any shots. That ball is going to be given away by Lake Village. I still think Warren would be wise to try to get inside with the ball. We, we've just definitely got an advantage uh, both in size and I believe in skill. And I believe our inside players can, can score some points and we'll just be a little patient. Over to Charles. Back to Gaithen. Gaithen is pressured pretty quickly, but she gets a steal. Gets it back down the floor to Charles. Inside to Robertson. Robertson pivots. Shot up. No good. Oh, it is good. And she's going to line to shoot one more. Yeah. Ain't nothing. And Rob, that's twice she's made that same similar play inside. She's received the ball in the paint and just pivoted and, and dropped it in. Very nice. Here's the three-point attempt. And as that free throw doesn't fall, it remains eight to nothing. Now Lakeside again, driving into the paint from the point. It's going to be knocked away. It remains Lakeside ball. Lakeside looking for their first points of this ball game. Getting rebounds, and finally one's going to fall, and they're going to go to the line. Shoot one more. Warren gave up a rebound there, gave them about three shots, and, and we just were not in the right position. Couldn't get our hands on the ball, but they were making an effort. Very unusual foul shot. Doesn't fall. And it works out for Lakeside as they get two more. All of a sudden that lead's cut in half. It's eight to four now. Lady Jacks lead the Beavers of Lakeside. Pickett gets it back to Gaithen. Gaithen over to Charles, shot up. Finally one falls, and that was going to be credited to Pickett. Good offensive rebounding. And Hegler with a good defensive effort. Makes the shot pretty difficult. It's going to roll off and pick its leg and goes out of bounds. Lakeside ball still. Three oh four to go in the first quarter. Ten to four. The Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Thank you for joining us here on Lumberjack Live, the number one sports program in the River Region. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, and again, if you see these guys are going to their businesses, please uh, tell them thank you for sponsoring Lumberjack Live. They're the reason that you get to watch this game at absolutely no cost. Sonic of Warren, Golden Girls Restaurant, the Arkansas Superior Federal Credit Union, Dr. Donnie Bryant and Dr. Julie Bryant, Hooper's Body Shop, Warren Tire, Dr. Mark Bryant, SAU Tech and Baptist Health. Another thank you to those sponsors of Lumberjack Live basketball season. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll remain Lady Jack basketball with 2.38 to go in the first. Again, it's still 10 to 4 if you're just now joining us here on Lumberjack Live. Robertson gives that one away. And now Lakeside back down the floor. We're going to get a foul called, and this one's going to be. On number 32, Kiara Charles of Warren. This one does not fall, so it's still 10-4. And here comes the second with 2.31 to go in the first. We've got a chance to cut it to a five-point lead. 
Shots up and it's good. So we do have a five point game. 10 5. Warren Lee's Lakeside. 2.27 to go in the first. Pickett just beyond the three point line. Back to Pickett. She takes a three point shot. It's up, no good. It's going to go out of bounds. It goes off of number 12 of Warren, and that is Yakima Hegler. Lakeside basketball. Approaching the two minute mark in the first. And that's a turnover. We're going to have a walk called on Pierre Charles. Well, she just looked confused that time. She looked like she wanted to pass the ball long, and there was no one down there. And she stopped and moved her feet. Lakeside with the shot, no good. They get their own rebound, throw it out, just trying to find somebody, and nobody was there. Lady Jack ball. Minute 56 to go on the first. 10-5 for Lady Jack's lead. Morgan Gaithen bringing it down at the point. Back to Gaithen. Over to Charles. Now over to number 14, LaKendra Marks. Now inside the picket. Picket's shot is up. No good. And she's getting in good spots, but just not able to hit the shot. We're, we're not shooting real well. But that was a, a good location for her to shoot. Lakeside trying to find some type of opening, but nothing there at this point. Lay it off. Gaithen almost gets the steal. Ball just thrown up, hits the top. Not sure why it wasn't blown dead. And now Pickett's on the counterattack. And it's stolen from her. Lakeside is going to bring in a substitute. They'll take it out. Three point shot up and no good. Marks there was on the rebound. Now over to Gaithen. Gets it to Charles. Over to Pickett. Back to Gaithen. Back to Charles. Now back to Gaithen at the point. Inside the picket. Picket pivots. Shoots and it's nowhere near the rim. Gaithen trying to make something happen defensively. And she knocks it away, but it's still Lakeside basketball. 31 seconds to go in the first. Lady Jacks have a 10-5 lead over the Lakeside Be Lady Beavers. Three-point shot is up, and it is no good. Jumper inside. Little floater shot almost. Pickett finally gets that rebound after about the third shot. And she gets it over to Morgan Gaithen. Now Marks gets it back to Charles. Over to Gaithen. Six seconds. Gaithen, three-point shot up. It's no good. And it's going to be the end of the first quarter. 10-5 game. We're going to be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. Lady Jacks lead 10-5. Lakeside at the end of the first. SAU Tech is no longer South Arkansas's best kept secret. SAU Tech provides a quality education for an affordable price right here where you live. Online classes, technical degrees, and transfer degrees make SAU Tech a good choice to start your educational journey or to jumpstart your career. Call us and let us put you first. 870-574-4558 or check us out on the web at www.sautech.edu. Hi, I'm Clay Cox, running back for the Lumberjacks and a member of the class of 2015. You're watching Lumberjack Live on SalineRiverChronicle.com. Let's go, Jacks. Welcome back to Lumberjack Live. If you wait just a little bit, the guy that you just saw there on that promo, he's going to be live here on the court, Clay Cox, along with the rest of the Warren Lumberjack senior boys basketball team taking on Lakeside tonight immediately following this game. So stick around. They've had a long week as well, and uh, Von Eric Goddard was actually a little, got a little injured last night, from what I've heard, and had to have some stitches. 
but I understand he is going to be able to play tonight. This is a basketball team that is getting better, but uh, recently have hit a tough, tough stretch. Ball's out of bounds. It's going to remain with Lakeside here. This is senior girls basketball. If you're just now joining us. <coughs> Again, I want to take a chance to say thank you to our follow-up. Let's hold on. Morgan Gaithin on the counterattack. She gets it to Charles, and the layup's missed. It's going to be out of bounds. Lakeside ball. Tonight's sponsors are Sonic of Warren, Golden Girls Restaurant, the Arkansas Superior Federal Credit Union, Dr. Ronnie Bryant and Dr. Julie Bryant, Hooper's Body Shop, Warren Tire, Dr. Mark Bryant, SAU Tech, and Baptist Health. So stick around. We got more basketball coming your way. We got girls basketball happening right now as that ball's knocked out of bounds with a foul call. Morgan Gaithin was on the attack, and she will. Looks like go to the line to shoot two. Rob, as you went through our list of sponsors, I'd like to point out, of course, all of them are great Lumberjack supporters, but all the doctors that you mentioned, all of them are former Lumberjacks. Uh, Dr. Donnie Bryant, Dr. Julie Bryant, and Dr. Mark Bryant. They're all former Lumberjacks. That's pretty good athletes. Uh, Dr. Donnie and Dr. Julie, both uh, outstanding basketball players. Dr. Mark Bryant, outstanding football player. Inside to Pickett. Pickett takes a shot and a nice one off the glass. I love to see him use the backboard like <laughs> that. That was well done. Surprisingly, you don't see it quite as much as you used to. Of course, when I played, I wasn't much of a basketball player. I was just trying to get it in the general vicinity of the of the goal, not necessarily get it in the goal. <laughs> but it helps to use the backboard. We've got a traveling violation called on Shamika Pickett. 6.49 to go in the second quarter. 13-5. Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Mia Thomas in there now, fighting for the basketball. Robertson's going to eventually get it. She gets it over to Pickett. Now Pickett coming down the floor. Free layup and can't get it to roll in. And again, we talked about this last week. Those are the kind that you have to find the bottom of the net with. This has to happen. Once again, she did not get the ball up on the backboard and high enough. That's why it didn't go in. Uh, she made a Beautiful little jump bank shot a while ago, but she didn't get that up high enough. Thomas in there on the defense, along with Gaithin. Now Thomas on the breakaway. Can she control it? Shot up, rims out. Thomas has it again, goes back up, and misses this one. Lakeside's got it. Now Gaithin, good defense. Over to Robertson. Robertson's foul. She's going to line. She'll shoot too. But still, you got to hit those layups. Well, we got to get the ball up over our head. We, we're still playing with the basketball down low in our hands, and that's one reason we're not getting the shots up off the glass. Barrels are playing very hard, playing pretty good defense. Here's Robertson's first. Shot up. No good, still 13-5. Lady Jacks lead. Got a timeout call on the floor. I think Lake Village called the timeout. Getting a shot right there. Coach Hatley and her senior girls in their huddle. And Rob, we have a good number of senior girls playing basketball. A nice, good size yeah, squad. Cool, cool. I, I got a little bit of a, a hint about our softball team has uh, over, I think it's over 21 kids or something like that. It's a huge number. They're going to have enough to have a JV softball team this, this season. 
uh, baseball and softball are well underway practice wise right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And that's great to hear that, that they got the numbers to have a JV. That helps. Yeah. A lot of kids get to play. And uh, Warren High School again last year they expanded to soccer. There's talk right now that by next year, I guess, it will be, be next next year, uh, that there will be a girls volleyball team. Apparently there was enough interest to, to get a girls volleyball team up, and uh, volleyball is a fun sport to watch, to be honest. I, I, it's one of my favorite Olympic sports when time comes around. I love to watch volleyball. Fast-paced. Some outstanding athletes, yes. usually, too, on that level. And typically some former basketball players. <laughs> nice job by Pickett to get back down the floor, hustle, and knock that one away without picking up the foul. Score 14-7. to With 5.21 to go in the second quarter. Gaithan gets the basketball, gets it to Pickett. Pickett going to drive in, and we're going to have a foul called. And it's going to be on Lakeside, but she's definitely trailing Pickett, trying to get in front of her, and just didn't quite get there without moving her feet. Lakeside coach is not too happy about it, but well, that was not a charge. P uh, Pickett did an excellent job of controlling the ball. And got a technical foul now called on Lakeside's coach. Kind of looks like he wanted to get that, didn't he? Yeah, he was <laughs> upset about an earlier call, too, that was a was call of charge. He wasn't happy about it. Uh, now Pickett's going to the line. She'll shoot some free throws. She should have. Uh, I don't know if it's just she got fouled, but was that a shooting foul? I or? don't believe it was. I think it was a four foul. So... So she should get, what, two free throws, and the first one doesn't fall, just barely rims out. Got to start making more three for free throws than we're making. We're yeah. still struggling with shooting at the foul line. That just really hurts you. The second doesn't fall either. She seemed to be getting some shots for the foul. They may be in the bonus. Up. Finally gets one to fall. She's going to get one more. So there was a technical and a shooting foul apparently. Yeah. Right. And Lady Jacks will get possession after this as well. Knocks down a second. She gets two or four. And we should have the ball. 16 to 17 now. Lady Jacks will retain possession after that technical. Gets it in to Morgan Gaithen. Morgan's been a quiet success this year. She's uh, she's played pretty well, and right there you can tell. She's got a little bit of athleticism. That's going to be a backcourt violation. And uh, Lady Jacks now will have to go on the defensive. 5.03 to go in the second. It is 16-7 still. If you're just joining us, we're watching Lumberjack Live on uh, SelimaRiverGarnacle.com. Shots up and it's good. Nice job by Lakeside and they cut it to 16 to 9. Now Gaithen bringing it down the floor, gets it to pick it. Now inside to Robertson. Robertson turns, pivots, shoots and it's not there. She just kind of threw that one up. She really didn't not really sure she knew exactly where she was on the floor and Lakeside on the other end attempts a three-pointer and can't get it to fall, but they're going to go to the line to shoot two after the rebound and the shot to pick up the foul. Warren's giving up rebounds they shouldn't give up on yeah. the defensive end. We're just, I don't know what, we're not in the right position or something. <laughs> Let's get them on the camera after this shot. Just, just give us just a second. We'll get you on camera. All right, go ahead. Give them away. A couple of young, young people having a blast here watching the senior Lady Jacks play. 
Some future Lumberjacks in the making. It's a special club. Once you come to your first Lumberjack game or Lady Jack game, you, it's really just hard to be anything but a Lumberjack and wear the orange and black. Pick it now. Going to be called for a charge. And out of the three charges we've had called, that was the one that I thought probably was the least <laughs> of a charge. But anyway, moving on. It's been a long night for the officials, too. They've already had two games before this. That shot's up. And it's no good. Lakeside gets the rebound, though. We're getting beat on the boards too, too much right now. Well, we, we just never seem to be in the right position, for one thing. We, uh, we're getting blocked out or something. I mean, it's hard to tell at times. But 16 to 9 with 3.54 to go in the second. Lakeside's at the free throw line. They get two shots out of this. First one doesn't fall. There's the second. It's up. No good. Pickett's got the rebound. Good position. Locked out well. Now Gaithen's getting it down the floor. Davis with the ball now. Gets it back. Tipped out of bounds. Remains Lady Jack ball. We're gonna get a view. And here's another Lady Jack fan enjoying tonight's ball games. Pickett gets it on the inbounds pass. Goes up for the shot. Can't get it to fall. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Rob, I think that ball went down into the cylinder and then came back out. It's just uh, it's a funny thing what a, what a round basketball can do on a flat floor or in a round rim. can have some weird bounces. First free throw falls. 17-9. So pick it here with the second free throw attempt. It's up and it's good. So I believe she's hit four in a row now. And the press is on, and Lakeside breaks it pretty easily. Only one person back. Davis was up forward. Now Davis on the defensive in a 2-3 zone. It's going to be a two-point shot. Her foot was well over the line. And it's given away very quickly. Shot up and good. You can't have that. That's that's just sloppy ball handling. We were not paying attention to what we were doing and gave up a real cheap one there. I got to tell you, I really thought Lake Village shooter a couple of plays ago. They're they're moving their feet before they shoot. Pick it over to Gaithen. Gaithen shot no good. Second shot up this time by number 24, Jalexia Oliver, and she would go to the line to shoot too. Two fifty to go in the second quarter. Eighteen to eleven is the score. Lady Jack's lead. Lakeside. If you're in town and you're able to get out, come on over. We got plenty of time. We got a whole half of Lady Jack ball to play, and then we got an entire senior boys game coming up immediately following this one. So there's plenty of time to get to this ball game and see a whole other one before you before you leave. You get your money's worth. I promise. If nothing else, our senior boys team is fun to watch. They've struggled this week a little bit and last Friday against Monticello, but other than that, they are a run and gun team. They are, in fact, the definition of run and gun most of the time. Well, excellent athletes. They're still learning how to play basketball as a, as a team and uh, been struggling some scoring. That's been a, just been a problem, not putting enough... Uh, But they are fun to watch. You're exactly right about that. 
we do encourage everybody to come out here. Warren Jim is a pretty good, good crowd tonight already. Yeah. Excellent crowd. Uh, of course, we were full for the Monticello game. This is not quite as many people from Lake Village, but a good crowd, excellent crowd. Gaithen now with the basketball. Gets it over to Davis, back to Gaithen, over to Charles. Now Gaithen. Now back over to Davis, back to Gaithen. Shot up, good, nice job. Very nicely done. Morgan Gaithen. Good patience there, Rob. They really kept working the ball so they could, she could penetrate in the paint. Got a nice shot. Three-point shot up. Good from Lakeside. They're starting, to hit a few. They're starting to hit a few. We're going to have to play a little tighter. Inevitably, in that two-three zone, sometimes you're going to get you're going to get some three-point shots taken inside the picket, and that just really wasn't there. Warren continues to turn the ball over a lot. Well, that's that is uh, hurting. You get the impression that we're considerably better than they are, but we can't. Can't play away. away with our uh, turnovers and our lack of foul shooting. One ten to go in the second quarter. Twenty to fourteen. The Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Lakeside slowing it down. That's a double dribble, and it wasn't caught. She did pick it up. And we continue to get beat on the boards by a smaller team. And that's just a matter of progressiveness. Who's going to be? They're, they're making a very much ball game out of this. 20 to 16. Over to Gaithen. 28 seconds to go. Shot up. Good. <laughs> Number 15, Marquia Thomas. She seemed rather hesitant to take it, but when she did, she drained it. Rob, that's one of those where you say, no, 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 no. Oh, good shot. 23-16, <laughs> that helps. That really does help. And again, we got beat on the baseline. Well, the foul is called. Cer certainly did. Got beat on the baseline. Seven seconds to go in the half. And again at halftime, we will uh, let you watch what's going on in the court. We'll play some music in the background. And uh, you guys will be able to, we'll get to take a break. Shot's no good. Pickett's got the rebound. Gets it over to Thomas. Three seconds. Shot up and just missed it. I think she got it off in time. All right. That is the end of the first half. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Actually, we're going to take a halftime break, like I just said. I apologize. We're going to take a halftime break. You'll hear the music. You'll get to see what's going on in the court, and we'll be back when the third quarter starts. Again, 23-16 at the half. Lady Jacks lead Lakeside.
Welcome back. We still want to give you another bit of information, if you would. If you can, follow me on Twitter, at Rob Reap Jr., and that's capital R-O-B-R-E-E-P, capital J-R. So, at Rob Reap Jr., follow me on Twitter. Obviously, today, I don't know if you guys know much about me, but I love soccer. I'm like a soccer addict, I guess. That's the best way to say it. And uh, I'm a uh, pretty big pretty big Arsenal fan. I love Premier League soccer especially. So today's today's story, Theo Walcott signed a new contract. I know most of you guys probably don't know a thing about Theo Walcott or Arsenal, anything about him, but trust me, it's big news in the world of sports today. I'm going to get together with him and I'll like It's a major, major contract deal out of, out of England. Which leads me to the point we got soccer season and baseball season all coming up for the Lumberjacks and Lady Jacks. You're going to get uh, some really, really fun sports coming up in the spring, and that's going to be on Lumberjack Live as well. You're going to get to watch soccer, baseball, softball, all on Lumberjack Live. So be sure to check it out if you can. You can follow me on uh, follow me on Twitter for all the latest information that. It, where I'm going to be live, things like that. Again, at Rob Reap Jr., follow me on Twitter. I do a lot more Twitter now than I do Facebook. I do quite a bit of Facebook, but Twitter's kind of the, Twitter's kind of the thing right now. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's halftime here, 2.52 to go before the third quarter begins, and it's 23-16. Lady Jacks have a lead. So, uh, see a pretty good crowd here tonight overall. Lakeside, about a few. But on our side, it's pretty packed pretty packed house. We saw Clay Cox walk by. You should get to see him here in a little bit. He's be playing a little bit of point tonight. So our camera operator getting a shot of all the crowd. But again, I do want to tell you guys, if you would, on our sports page, just below the video that you're watching right now, unless you're watching it on a single link where you've just, just got only this story on the page, if you've got it with multiple stories, right below this story, you get got a video uh, where uh, Jerry S. Wright sat down with myself and Ryan Mosley and, uh, and talked about this past season, his rookie season with the Minnesota Vikings, how that went, what his really weekly routine was like, and that was a really interesting thing to listen to. I mean, I've, I've watched Hard Knocks before on HBO, so I, I had a general idea of what these guys have to go through. But, you know, you look at you look at what professional athletes in the NFL are paid, and then you look at their work hours. It's not a cakewalk. I mean, it's it is it is uh, it's tough labor in, in a lot of in a lot of ways. I mean, Jerry's just talking about how especially on Thursdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays sometimes, he'll show up at the at the uh, facilities around 7.30 a.m. He won't go home until 6.30 or 7 that evening. So it's, it's, a, it's a rigorous schedule, and uh, not, just, not just physically but mentally, studying week in and week out your next week's opponents. You have a week to learn everything you can. And it, I mean, that can't, be, that can't be a simple task. But, but watch the interview. I think you'll, think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I won't give it away, uh, Rob, but he also gives his prediction on the Super Bowl. Yeah, and which he was hoping to be in, but uh, <laughs> didn't didn't quite work out. I was I was surprised <laughs> at it. I, I actually my prediction is a little bit different than his, so so we'll see how it comes out. I, I don't think he can go wrong though. I think he may know a little bit more about it than I do, so <laughs> you might want to take his word and not mine. But I do. If Darius watches this on demand, or if he's watching it live. We appreciate you doing the interview with us, man. 23-16, third quarter of play has begun here on Lumberjack Live. Again, I want to name off all of our sponsors for tonight's game. Sonic of Warren, Golden Girls Restaurant, the Arkansas Superior Federal Credit Union, Dr. Donnie Bryant and Dr. Julie Bryant, Cooper's Body Shop, Warren Tire, Dr. Mark Bryant, SAU Tech, and Baptist Hill. So thank you to all of those sponsors. We got a foul called. 
Rob, we urge our listeners certainly to utilize these sponsors. They're all yes. good business people here in Warren, great supporters of all the... Well, without them, this doesn't happen. We, uh, what we're doing doesn't happen. So, uh, Unfortunately, what we do does cost money to, to put together, so we, uh, we have to have sponsors backing it. It's either that or our, or our viewers pay for it, one of the two. And we don't want you guys to have to pay for it, so our sponsors are kind enough to help that process out and get it to you at no cost. And most of them are also uh, great supporters of all other kind of projects in the community and, uh, of course, provide great services uh, for our people, too. In fact, last night at the Reap household, we had Golden Girls Fish, which was... Excellent. Outstanding. Uh, I devoured every bit of it. Probably didn't need to eat that many calories, but I did and didn't really care afterwards. But it's great fish. I promise you that. Of course, Sonic just a few miles down the road in town. Well, they were going to stay at the foul line down here for a while. This is about the third time on just on foul shots. We're committing fouls and leaving Lakeside shooting. Still third quarter, 7.22 to go in the third quarter. 23-16, Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Free throw attempt up, no good from the Lady Beavers. The good news is they're not converting very many free throws so far. I tell you what, when you can hit free throws, your game is greatly altered. And this is the rim there, so it'll be Lady Jack Ball. Over to Pickett. Shaniqua Pickett. The ball stolen. Lakeside's got it. They're hustling down the floor. Shot taken, no good again. Well, this time, Lady Jacks finally get one off the boards. Now Pickett on the run, gets it to Robertson, shot up, and it falls. 25-16. Didn't want to go, but it finally, it finally surrendered. Back to the Lakeside offensive end. Three-point shot up, and it is good. She's got a hot hand right now. 25 to 19, 6.27 to go in the third quarter. Number 13 has hit a couple of shots for yeah. uh, Lakeside. She's over to Gaithen, now over to Pickett. Shoot, good shooter. Back across to Charles. Now Gaithen inside, kicks it out to Pickett. Pickett takes the shot, no good. Gaithen's got it, drives inside. Shot up, no good. And I'm saying that way too many times. Gaithen finally tracks back, gets it back across. Nice job. Charles has it. Three-point attempt up. No good. And Lakeside's going to finally get it. And they've got a girl down court with a chance for an easy lay-in. She's going to be fouled, and we're going to go to the line. Lakeside's going to be shooting, too. Warren continues to not move the ball inside offensively. I just believe we need to do that. We're just not a great enough outside perimeter shooting team to keep putting the ball up that much out there. And that first free throw falls. 25-20. 5.54 to go in third. Second free throw attempts up, no good. And Lakeside wins the rebound, and that's that really can't happen. You've got to get position on free throw much smaller team and they're much more aggressive going to the ball than Warren has been so far tonight uh, at least overall now Gaithen going to track it down the floor from the point gets it to pick it inside and that ball's going to go out of bounds Lakeside basketball again 5.38 to go on the third now Three-point attempt up, and no good. Robertson's got the rebound, but they're going to call a jump ball. It's going to remain with Lakeside. That's a case, Rob, where she clearly got up, got the rebound, and just didn't keep the ball up and take it away physically. And uh, 
Let them tie it up and got the jump ball. Out of bounds. Remains with Lakeside. Because we don't do many jump balls anymore. I guess the opening tip off's about it, isn't it? That's pretty much it. Alternating possessions now. Which I don't like, but that's just me personally. I well, they claim it speeds the game up. You know, we used to, there was a, a jump ball just, you know, every time. Warren's committing a lot of fouls right now. I'm told back in the olden days of basketball that after every shot scored, there was a jump ball. I've had people tell me, you know, what, many, many years ago, obviously, early years of basketball, that there was a jump ball. I had a couple of gentlemen in Warren that played back in the, you know, the 20s and the 30s, and they said that's the way they did it. I forget what year it was. It's it's been a it's been a long time ago, but the Warren boys did win a state championship. But it has been many, 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 many years ago, back in like the twenties or something like that. Uh, and it was interesting because it was it was back at a time, from what I understand, and I could have my information a little bit inaccurate here, but uh, at a time when there obviously there were no difference in classifications, you you, just, you didn't play anybody. In your specific classification for a state championship, it was you had to beat you had to beat the big boys too to right. become become the winner. And I know uh, Ben Cuthbertson, who used to uh, be a color commentator when we first started Lumberjack Live. Uh, his grandfather, I believe, was on that team. Warren is certainly been in the playoffs uh, over the years uh, even going back to when really the playoff system started back in the 60s and the 70s and uh, the years of many years when I go when I was in high school we were in the playoffs pretty regular state playoffs pick it inside shot good 27 to 22 good Four, passing 438 to go here in the third quarter ball gets out of bounds. We got an injury for Lakeside. Have to get a sub in it looks like. We got a timeout called. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. 27-22, Lady Jack's lead. Tech is no longer South Arkansas's best-kept secret. SAU Tech provides a quality education for an affordable price right here where you live. Online classes, technical degrees, and transfer degrees make SAU Tech a good choice to start your educational journey or to jumpstart your career. Call us and let us put you first. 870-574-4558 or check us out on the web at www.sautech.edu Welcome back to Lumberjack Live on SalimRiverChronicle.com I'm Rob Reap alongside Greg Reap It's been a long night we've had two ball games before this one this one playing right now and then we've got one more immediately following this ball game so Warren has won all of them so far. If he can win this one and win the next one, we can get a sweep for the night. 27-22 with 4-28 to go in the third quarter. The Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Kick it now. Losing possession as she got the rebound initially. We got a foul call. We got, oh, we're going to have a walk call before the, a foul was committed. She tried to run a little too fast with that one. Never got control of the ball, but we fortunately got it back. Gaithan now bringing it down the floor at the point. Gets it over to Davis. Back to Gaithan. That jump ball. Possession arrow with the Lady Jacks, so they'll keep it. And that was Marks. Who had the basketball right there. Gets it out to Gaithan. Gaithan over to Davis. Davis. Back to Gaithan now over to Marks. Shot up. No good from Pickett. 
Once again, we missed technically a layup. It wasn't an easy one, but there's too many misses. Shot up, no good. Goes out of bounds. Remains. 341 to go in the third, 27 to 22. And now number 15, Marquia Thomas comes into the ball game for Marks. Thomas is the one who hit that three earlier for Warren. Ball on the floor. Lakeside's got it. We're going to have a traveling violation. Her knee did slide. Thomas has it, gets it inside to pick it. Pick it with the shot. She's going to line to shoot two. And there again, she needs to put that in. She had a clean uh, opportunity to go ahead and score and get a three-point play. Again, she went to the rim. Did draw the foul, which is good. Hopefully she can convert. Pick it at the line to shoot two. Drains the first one. 28-22 with 3.23 to go. In the third period. Comes her second. It's up and it's good. Nice job by Shaniqua Pickett. Like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Celine River Chronicle. Three point shot up again and good. From number 13 to Lakeside. And that's going to make it 29 25. Going to have to get somebody on her. Well, she tipped away, but it stays with the Lady Jacks. She is keeping them in this game. Warren is. Uh, should be uh, way out in front, even as poorly as we shoot at times. And uh, she has really hit some shots, and it's paid off. Pickett driving inside. We're going to have a foul called on Lakeside. Coach Hatley more fired up than usual tonight, it seems like, over there. She's gotten on her girls a good bit. I think she sees a lot of potential in this team, but a little bit more aggressiveness needed as we've talked about. And that shot doesn't find its way in somehow again. And once again, Rob probably should have used the backboard and shot at the rim and it rolled around and came out. Shot up and they're going to the line to shoot two. It's 2.43 to go in the third quarter. 29-25. Lady Jacks have a lead over the lakeside. Lady Beavers. Here comes the first free throw. Shots up and it's good. 29 to 26 now. Here's the second. It's up and it's good. We got us a two-point ball game all of a sudden. 29-27. Gaithen with the basketball at the point. Brings it down the floor. Gets it over to Thomas. Back to Gaithen inside to pick it. Pick it. Rolls. Shot up and no good. She's getting in great shooting positions and just not finishing. She's getting at bad angles under the, under the goal at times is part of the problem. She's She's an excellent player, going to get better and better, no doubt about it. But hasn't scored a lot tonight other than some free throws, which she's been very good at. Shot up, and it doesn't fall. Now Morgan Gaithen with a chance on the breakaway. Gaithen going to draw a foul. Nice job. I like Morgan Gaithen. She's a, she's a, she's a tough little athlete. There's, you don't see a lot of fire out of her, but you know it's there. She's, she attacks. It's, it's not a... It's not a passive game from Gaithen, but she uh, she's a definite contributor to any success this team has. She's a pretty good ball handler. And a pretty good free throw shooter right there. Drops that one. Plays hard. Plays hard. That's but with with a controlled attitude. It's 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 very much the attitude of a quarterback on the floor. She she's able to and pick it right there, uses the glass, gets a nice rebound on the offensive end. And puts it in, 32-27, so that turns into a three-point possession. Good job. And a nice job right there by Gaithen. On the run. Gets it to Thomas. Thomas, layup, no good. 
Pickett's got it. Shot up. Good. 34-27. Again, Morgan Gaithen on the front end of that one. Shot. No good, but she draws the foul. We've got to get back faster. That uh, number 13 can go. Lakeside's got a couple of really good ball players. Here's the free throw attempt. Does not fall. Remains 34-27 with a minute and 38 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Looks like we have a timeout called by Lakeside. All right, we're going to take another commercial break. We'll be right back. 34-27, Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. SAU Tech is no longer South Arkansas's best kept secret. SAU Tech provides a quality education for an affordable price right here where you live. Online classes, technical degrees, and transfer degrees make SAU Tech a good choice to start your educational journey or to jumpstart your career. Call us and let us put you first. 870-574-4558 or check us out on the web at www.sautech.edu. Hi, I'm Chris Norton, former Lumberjack All-Conference offensive lineman, member of the class of 2006, and head football coach of the West Memphis Christian School Black Knights. You are watching the number one sports program in the River Region, Lumberjack Live, on SaleneRiverChronicle.com. Welcome back to Lumberjack Live on SaleneRiverChronicle.com. Thank you again right there to Chris Norton, who did that intro promo for us. Uh, we've had that one since football season. Of course, he's the head football coach at West Memphis Christian Academy. And uh, he's also coaching baseball, so he's well into the season. And if Chris watches this on demand, or if you're watching it live, we appreciate it. Appreciate you helping us out with SlimRiverChronicle.com. Chris was also last spring our color commentator for baseball, soccer, and softball. Did a wonderful job. And we wish him, again, the best of luck in all of his future endeavors. Shot up and good. Our, our color commentators have had a good record after they leave SelenaRiverChronicle.com. So, Dad, you may you may have something good going for you. Of course, Denon Cutherson's in the uh, sports information department at Arkansas State, and Chris is the head coach at West Memphis Christian, and Ryan Mosley has been with us. Jump ball right there. Uh, I really thought that was a walk. I thought she Probably. rolled over, rolled over, but he... Well, I doubt if my future's in coaching, so. <laughs> uh, but I do enjoy watching. Basketball, football, baseball. I even like track meets. It's all fun. <laughs> 34-28 with 57 seconds to go. We got a walk call on Lakeside. So it'll be Lady Jack Hall and the uh, Orange and Black have the lead. Remember to stick with us after this ball game. We got one more quarter to go here, but remember to stick with us following that. We'll go offline for a short period of time, and then we'll come back after about five minutes with the boys' game. Pick it, pivots, shot up, no good, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. And it's just a freshman. You hope in the next few years, Pickett will get to where she's already drawing those fouls. Can she just start dropping some shots down and still finishing up with a free throw? Uh, which can make a huge difference. Shot up and good. She's really been solid shooting free throws overall tonight. Yeah, Possibly. last Friday against Monticello, she had she struggled to the line a good bit in that ball game, if I remember correctly, and uh, don't have the exact stats in front of me. But it, it was it, all around just a tough night, but uh, for for both the boys and the girls. But well, I'll continue to watch. Uh, on both teams to some degree, but it uh, seemed like Lakeside, my, my good friend uh, Tommy Lawrence, uh, former Lumberjack, great football player, used to often watch basketball games with him. He'd, he would sometimes yell out at the official and say, there's a new rule out, it's called walking. <laughs> and I think I'm, uh, and I think we just saw one right there. There it is. But they did call that one. Because it seems to me like there's a good bit of moving of feet going on. on, And actually, both teams have done some of it. Uh, 
But the officials uh, apparently letting some of it go, but they called that one. Pass comes in to Thomas, gets it to pick it, shot up. She uses the glass again nicely and gets it to fall. This will be just about the end of the third quarter. Shot up and doesn't fall. 38-28 at the end of the third. We'll be right back. Lady Jacks lead by 10 points. We're on our way to another victory. Don't go anywhere. SAU Tech is no longer South Arkansas's best kept secret. SAU Tech provides a quality education for an affordable price right here where you live. Online classes, technical degrees, and transfer degrees make SAU Tech a good choice to start your educational journey or to jumpstart your career. Call us and let us put you first. 870-574-4558 or check us out on the web at www.sautech.edu. Hi, I'm Clay Cox, running back for the Lumberjacks and a member of the class of 2015. You're watching Lumberjack Live on SalineRiverChronicle.com. Let's go, Jacks. Welcome back to Lumberjack Live on SalineRiverChronicle.com. Remember, the guy you just saw right there in that promo, Clay Cox. going to be coming up here in the next little bit. The senior Lumberjack's going to be taking on Lakeside. The way he's kind of been an off-the-bench player most of the year, but... Pretty talented point guard at times. And, uh, last week against Monticello, he even lowered the shoulder <laughs> once or twice. He, he forgets sometimes that he's playing basketball. But uh, I'd, I'd hate to be standing in front of him. I know that. He had to play a lot last week. Uh, Darvion Brown, our point guard, got in a little foul trouble early. And that will be key tonight. Can you keep some of these guys out of foul trouble? And uh, simply, can, can, they, can they drop shots? You know, that's... They're a very athletic team, but it's it's a matter of scoring. Thirty-eight twenty-eight with seven forty-three to go in this ball game. Robertson shots up, no good. We got a foul call over the back on Pickett. I'll be honest, that hasn't been called all night. I think it's been there, but it hasn't been called all night. I'm not sure why all of a sudden that's called. But it didn't look, uh, didn't look as bad as, as some I've seen in the past, but just me. And that is three on her. Of course, Lakeside's in the bonus, too, so they're going to the line. We're in the fourth quarter, but that is three fouls on her. We really can't stand to have her out. She has to be in there. Free throw up, no good. And it looks like she stepped over the line, so it's going to be. Well, she, oh, missed she missed the rim. I'm not, she she got, not sure which one he called. But she, he, she missed the rim, yes. They're going to try to press now, I think. Smart move. Still only a 10-point game. You're not completely out of it yet if you're on, looking at Lakeside's point of view. But Torres has it, gets across court. That defense tightens up a little bit, gets it to pick it, pick it off the glass, 40 to 28. Nice, nice job. Nice pass, I'll say. Defense! Gaithen, nice job defensively, still putting pressure on Lakeside. the ball in. Lakeside working it around. Jumper up. No good. Foul call over the back. Got that over the back. Fine. Back, didn't we? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Leveled it out. And that was clearly over the back. There's no doubt about that. So. Well, I, actually, I truthfully thought the other one on us was over the back, but I just, at times, sometimes that's not called. And, Pickett breaks the press. Two on one. Takes a shot. Oh, nice job. Nice little floater from Shamiqua Pickett. There's some skill there. 6.45 to go in the fourth. Now, Gaithen down the floor. Slowing it down, nice, smart move. Good decision. Well, you got a big lead here, don't go throwing it away. Robertson takes a shot. She's going to the line to shoot two. If she could learn to turn into the, the bucket 
as well as Pickett does. Uh, she certainly yeah. got the ability and, and the height to get in there as well. True. She plays hard. So Robertson's at the line to shoot two, 6.27 to go in the ball game. And we got boys basketball coming up immediately following this game. Shots up, no good. Just got that a little bit too far left. Here's Robertson's second. It's up and will not find its way into the bottom of the net. Now it's just a matter of playing good, smart basketball. We've got another foul call on Lakeside. So Robertson will go back down and take one and one as the Lady Jacks are now into the bonus. Again, if you would, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Selene River Chronicle. It's the best way to keep up with everything going on in the River Region. Bradley County, parts of Cleveland County, and Calhoun. Mostly Bradley, but we do cover a good bit of Cleveland County stuff when it crops up. If you have a business and you want to advertise with us, give us a shout on our email, Chronicle at gmail.com. We reach around 25 to 30,000 people in the River Region specifically each week. Not bad. And it's relatively inexpensive. And that ball thrown away. 5.43 to go on the fourth. 42 to 28, Lady Jacks lead Lakeside. Rob, I really believe our advertising rates are considerably less expensive than uh, some other media options. Be glad to work with people in getting the word out on whatever they're trying to advertise. Really, I mean, you've got you've got options from anywhere from ten dollars up to two hundred and fifty. It's just really, it's kind of a name your price type thing. Uh, you just find out what your budget is and. and how long and how far you'd like it to reach and we can help you out with that. We've got we've got experts that know exactly how to do this stuff. And Lady Jack's now on the pressure again. Gathan Gathan gonna slow it down. That's a smart point guard. Good decision, good play. 42 28 with five minutes to go. There's no need to rush things. You need to just make sure you keep that lead. Don't get too wild with anything. Robertson gets it back over to Charles. Charles holds it. And that ball's knocked away. They'll stick with one. I think Coach Hatley is explaining it. She really didn't need to try to throw that inside at this point in the game. How it got got it, it inside. It's 44-28. That's a quick one. Nicely done again. So Lady Jacks seemingly headed to a W. Three-point shot up from Lakeside. No good. They get their own rebound. We got a foul call. They're going to the line to shoot two. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. This was just a two-point ball game. <laughs> <laughs> got another young Lumberjack fan there. Orange really pulled away here in the last several minutes. 4.18 to go in the fourth, 44-28 if you're just now joining us on Lumberjack Live. Shot up and no good. Free throw attempt from Lakeside and Pickett trying to dribble out of it. And she somehow keeps possession. Gets it back. Oh, too high the pass. And that's the kind of stuff you have to clean up because in a close ball game, come back to haunt you. Well, first she did a little bit too much dribbling. She should have probably yeah. pulled up and passed way earlier. She's a good dribbler, good ball handler, but probably overdid it, and then uh, the pass was just 
That, oh, block nice that shot. Block right there by uh, Kittenweech. That should have been a walk. Yeah, that was clearly a walk. That's, I'm kind of like my friend Mr. Lawrence. I think there's a new rule out on that. They're yeah. missing it a good bit. I think we've probably gotten by with a few, too. I don't want to indicate that it's just uh, just on the lake side, but that one was pretty blatant right there. 340 to go, 44, 28, Lady Jacks lead. Charles gets it, kicks it back, back to Charles. Hagler back to Charles. Hegler takes the shot. She had it. And it's going to go out of bounds. It'll be like side basketball with 3.18 to go in the ball game. I think my city councilman, Mr. Zach Burks, almost had to catch that ball over there in the bleachers. He's sitting uh, right on the front row over there on the northeast corner, and the ball and several players like to came into him there. So those of you who watch other live programs on SlingerVersonical.com other than just Lumberjack Live, you see Mr. Burks, City Alderman. Um, a nice job right there by Kiara Charles. She drops the bucket and lay up. So will see him every, every second Monday of the month. The Warren City Council meets, and we carry that live on SlingerVersonical.com. And it's an important thing to keep up with your local government. Know what's going on in your own community. Warren really playing smart basketball right now. They're, it's probably about as good as they played all night. Totally agree. Charles gets it over to Gaithen. Now back to Charles. Cuts it over to Hegler. Back to Gaithen. Over to Charles. Back to Gaithen. To Charles. Gaithen. Hegler. Hegler keeps it inbounds. Inside to Robertson. She draws the foul. She'll go to the line to shoot two with 2.15 to go in the ball game. We were doing real well. We kind of made a bad pass there, but fortunately we kind of retrieved it. A little something. Passing is so important in basketball. I don't think people sometimes realize how important passing the ball is and catching the ball. And hitting free throws. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Robertson knocks that one down, 47-28. Robertson getting set to take her second free throw attempt. Shots up, and it's good. Nice job by Robertson, Shakendra Robertson. And that's a solid 20-point lead now. 48-28 with two minutes to go. Three-point shot up, no good. Pickett's got the rebound. And she's fouled, so she'll go to the line. In the bonus to shoot a one-and-one. -one. Lake Village is pretty well just throwing the ball up now. Of course, down 20 points with two minutes left. They've got to score some points in a hurry. Understandable, but those kind of shots are not going to get you back in it. Coach Atley now meeting with the girls with exactly two minutes to go in the ball game. They've got a 48-28 lead. I think you can mark this up as a win. And again, stick with us. After this game, we're going to go offline for about five minutes, if that. And we will be back immediately following that five minutes with the Warren Senior Boys taking on Lakeside. Should be a fun ball game to watch. The athletic team of Coach Jimmy May. Coach May led his senior boys tonight to a a good tight a good a good win, good victory. 47-44 over Lakeside. Lakeside was a pretty good basketball team. They had one they had one kid, point guard, that was very athletic. Pretty good little basketball player. <coughs> I'm seeing something in, in our junior team that I that I honestly haven't in our junior boys team that I haven't seen in our in our senior boys team yet. Senior boys team's very athletic. Junior boys also very athletic, but there's a little bit of a fight in that junior boys team. They've 
<laughs> there's a little bit of that, that fire that we talked about that senior boys team really needing to find. And uh, I think the future of Warren basketball is getting brighter. A jump ball, possession error still with Lakeside. So a minute 47 to go, and as in basketball, the last two minutes take an eternity. But uh, I was certainly hoping he was going to call that for a wall because she stepped back a whole <laughs> And he did. All right, 144 to go, 48-28. Lady Jacks with the basketball. Gaithen's got it. She's going to slow things down, get it to Charles. Charles drives in, gets it to Robertson. Robertson takes it. I don't think she knew where she was on the floor, but Pickett gets it back. Now drives inside, takes a shot, it falls, 50-28. Uh, I think it might have surprised uh, Robertson, Robertson that was back <laughs> open. But it didn't surprise Pickett when she got it. She knew where she was. She went right Gaffin, in there. Gaffin now gets it over to Charles. Charles, shot, she's going to the line to shoot two. And a little bit of tempers flaring. A few Warren fans would like to see another technical foul called, I believe, from what the... I think it was just a little bit of a uh, uh, pretty hard body it, contact she's there. trying to make a play. That's really all there is uh, to that. And the young lady from Lakeside backed off very quickly and got out of the way. She didn't, she didn't push it. Charles is shot no good. And now, checking into the game, number one, Karen Escamilla. And Pickett goes out. She, did, she played well. Shot falls from Robertson, 52 to 28. Under a minute to go, 57 seconds in the fourth remaining. Lakeside is throwing that one up, and it's going to go out of bounds. Not sure where that came from, but. And Lakeside going to press. It's knocked out of bounds. Gets it to Robertson. Robertson going to hold it up. Gets it over to Morgan Gaithen. Gaithen gets it cross court. Got a foul called, and she'll go to the line and shoot two. Not really sure why Lakeside would be fouling right now. It's not uh, 39 seconds to go, and this kind of lead's not going to dissipate anytime soon. But uh, probably be better off just play solid defense and get this and over with the best they can. There. Of course, I guess you keep trying and trying to steal the ball and. That leads to more fouls often. 53-28. After that, free throw is hit by Morgan Gaithen. Her second is up, and it just goes in and out, literally. Charles has it. Layup. Won't go. Got a ball knocked out of bounds, and that's the kind that you – I know I know, you've got a good lead here, but – Man, <laughs> and an excellent break on the ball to steal the ball and, and, and get in there. Probably not left-handed, and that's a left-handed layup, but Robertson takes a shot, and it won't find its way in. That ball is going to go out of bounds. It'll remain with Lakeside with 20 seconds to go in the game. Stick with us. we got boys basketball immediately following this one. We'll go offline for about five minutes and come back. Foul called, and we're going to line to shoot. Bonus. I believe I've been the official. I might have just left that and go. We got the pass out. <laughs> Eight seconds left. It certainly has no impact on the game. I think one of the officials was telling him that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of laughing about it. But I don't know these gentlemen. They, I don't know. It may be a relatively young official. They're all fairly young-looking guys. Two of them are, anyway. That shot's up and it's good. Well, I hate to be the third one that you don't think's young. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them looks a little bit more mature, but none of them are old guys. For 54-28. <laughs> 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 
That's number 12, Yakima Hagler's at the line. She drops the first win and the second. 55-28, eight seconds to go. This should be it. Lakeside gonna bring it down the floor. Three-point shot up and no good. That's it, 55-28's the final. As uh, the Lady Jacks pick up a W. And one more ball game in the books. If we get another one, the boys can win. We'll have a four-game sweep tonight. All right, we're going to go offline for a little bit. We'll be right back with the boys game. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 